Welcome back, gamblers and fellow sports addicts. I'm Dave from BetSum, and today we're going to go over our Daily Fantasy Week 1 NFL Quick Picks. Now, most of you have not been here before, but we were doing this a few years back, and we got really into it, and we enjoyed it. And uh, we won a bunch of money in 2017, including a lineup that made us $25,000, which you can watch the video right here from a few years back. And uh, that kind of just shows you our, the lineup that we did, but also our basic kind of philosophy that we use when uh, constructing our lineups, which I would say is different than a lot of the rest, even the pros out there, as we tend to try and leverage the public a bit more than trying to go for like the best matchups and the best plays. And uh, it's served us very well over the past few years. And I do believe that that's what this game is about. And you know, it's what gambling is all about. And it's going against the grain at the right time. So our biggest score last year was for $25,000. And there was a second in the 333 Wildcat and first place got 100K. And uh, it was a fun sweat, and we ended up profiting uh, close to 40000 last year, but we spent that money fast. And it's gone. Now it's time to ante back up, get back in the game, and win some more money on NFL season. So just real quick, a little bit of background on us. We're a couple poker players, so we come from poker. Um, I myself, uh, as you can see on the screen right now, was a professional poker player from about 2007 to 2013, where I had millions of dollars of winnings and profited just under a million over that six-year period. I've played since then, but I primarily play here and there on StakeKings.com, which if you're unfamiliar with, is a site where you can go and buy action of poker pros and of daily fantasy pros and get in on their action. And in my case, you can even watch them play the poker tournament live, or if you buy our daily fantasy action, you can actually watch the lineups live and sweat with the lineups live as the games are going on our Twitch channel. We do this in part because yeah, we want to make money and yeah, we want to give good picks and we want everyone to win, but we want to have fun. You know, that's that's one of the main reasons we do this is because we thoroughly enjoy it. I mean, it's honestly one of my like last enjoy, like pure joys in life is when the NFL kickoff happens and I got 300 lineups and thousands of dollars at stake to win new a new life, you know? And um that that sort of enjoyment uh, we want to pass along. So you can you know take these picks and use them for yourself. You can go to StakeKings.com. You can buy our action, and on Sunday you can even sweat with us on Twitch. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, uh, check us out on Patreon where we have more in-depth picks on each position, why we're picking, who we're picking, and basically it's a way to just support us so we can ensure that this channel stays alive this time and keeps growing. And another way to support us, like I said before, is heading over to Stake Kings, buying some of our action on the packages, sweating with us and checking us out on Twitch uh, live during the streams here and there to check how the lineups are doing. All right, so with all that being said, let's hop into the picks. All right, guys, so at quarterback, um, I'm going to start out just by saying my strategy this week is probably going to be to fade these top six guys. Uh, that would be the Breeze and the Tom Brady game, the Matt Ryan and Russell Wilson game, and Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen. Uh, I think they're all fine picks. I do think that... Uh, um, they're going to be very popular though, and I'm going to be looking to go uh, a little bit lower owned in a, in a riskier matchup at quarterbacks receiver stack and uh, a little bit more um, balanced but public heavy uh, in some of the other spots. Uh, I like to try and get two guys at like the 5% range or less and then two guys that might be super public like 35% or higher and then a bunch of guys in between at that 20% average and I believe that's actually the most important part of beating a big field and c constructing a well-balanced lineup, having two small, having two very low-owned guys, two pretty high-owned guys, and then a bunch of the 20 percenters. So that being said, I do like a lot of these guys kind of in the middle, and um, just since for the uh, for the sake of the quick picks, I'm just going to pick Aaron Rodgers for now, who's my favorite going into this week, um, and that is because he's at Minnesota. It's a tough matchup. I believe he's going to be under 5% owned. I have a standing rule. Anytime I believe Rodgers or Drew Brees um, are going to be under 5% owned, I play them. And it has won me a ton of money uh, in the, back, in the um, uh, long run. So uh, it's an easy stack with Devontae Adams. It's another good reason to pick him. But also, uh, I believe Devontae Adams doesn't get quite as much love as some of those other Tier 1 receivers. Um, I also think that uh, him and Rodgers you know, have the best rapport in the league arguably, and that he might be closer to 10% or 12%, uh, whereas, you know, some of these other receivers, especially in, in those those Godwin-Evans-type games, who, you know, Julio will probably be high on, Michael Thomas, um, you know, those guys might be in the 20 to 30, and Devontae Adams might be in, like, the 10 to 12. So, again, here are kind of two of my lower owned guys in the less than 10% range, and uh, now we'll go off to running back, where... Um, 
I like Kamara in this spot with the number one OPRK. I think he's going to be, um, you know, somebody who I'm going to be looking to play when I want to differentiate my lineups a bit. But I think because this lineup um, is a Green Bay stack, it's super easy to go with a Dalvin Cook comeback. So I am going to do that in this lineup um, just to make the game flow of it kind of make sense where Minnesota kind of maybe gets up a little bit and is, you know, wants to run the ball a lot at home and Green Bay is going to have to play from behind and that's when Rodgers and Adams are, most, are the most lethal. Uh, so as far as the second running back in this, I would pick, I like Mixon a lot. I like that he's got the Q tags in a great spot. Um, I like a lot of these higher priced guys, but we're going to have to start going a little lower price now. And I think that the lower lowest price running back that I like, um, I like Marlon Mack a lot uh, away at Jacksonville, but I think I like Mark Ingram and Devin Singletary a little bit more at home in this price range. I liked Fournette a lot um, until he just got traded. So I think I'm going to go Mark Ingram, and uh, that's a spot where they Baltimore should really should really beat Cleveland with a solid running attack and be ahead the whole game, uh, giving Mark Ingram a good chance at 20 to 30 points. Um, so now we're going to look at some other wide receivers that we like and I mentioned this in another video and I think that the best value on the board this week is Emmanuel Sanders 5700. I basically think that uh, Michael Thomas is going to draw a lot of doubles. Um, Emmanuel Sanders is going to get 10 targets and uh, you know are close to it and he's going to have a chance. I think his floor is 10 and his ceiling is 40 and I think he's also going to go up to the 7K range at some point. I could be wrong, but I feel that way about him and, and T.Y. Hilton With now that these two stellar uh, receivers, especially Hilton, have these quarterbacks throwing it to him. So I'm going to probably play both of them in this lineup, as I love both of them. And I think as you go higher up, um, you might have some better options, but I also think that... Uh, kind of the I think there's a lot of value in this five to sixty five hundred range I also think another cool one is OBJ um, I already have some lower owned plays in this so I don't really need to gamble on him but I think he's actually gonna be pretty low owned and has a super high ceiling for a low price uh, he could jump up to that 7k range no problem as well so as far as tight end goes um, well actually we're gonna go to defense first and see what we're left with um, I'm gonna go the cheapest defense that I like this week um, is going to be uh, Indianapolis. I'm sorry, it's going to be Jacksonville, home versus Indianapolis at 2,300. Um, they're not my favorite defense on the board. However, I do think that if you're looking for someone cheap to fit you know, some higher priced offensive weapons into your lineup, there's somebody at home versus Phillip Rivers who is, is very accident mistake prone. And uh, you know he does get sacked a lot. He does get uh, throw picks a lot. Jags will have more opportunities to score versus a quarterback like him than a lot of others and he's on a new team with a new offense who knows what could happen there so I like the Jags D at 2300 um, again I like Carolina's D and some other defenses that are higher priced um, and I think if you're if I were to go a little bit higher priced I would pick the Panthers they would be my play here where are they here yeah uh, 2500 so I think it's close between these two um, if I can move up, I'll probably go up to Carolina there, but I think that Carolina or the Jacksonville are really good defenses at low prices if you're looking for that this week, which a lot of people usually are. So let's check out tight end and at tight end. Um, I'm pretty high on, uh, for cheap tight ends. I'm pretty high on uh, Doyle on the Colts with Rivers throwing it to him. Rivers historically likes his tight end. So I think that that's a pretty good play. And I also think that Jacecki on Miami is a pretty good play but um we're gonna go with doyle for now he's probably my favorite value um at tight end uh he's got the q tag there but i think it was migraines and he should be all right oh no it was a neck injury but um I, if he doesn't play i would go up to jacecki on miami especially if preston williams is out for them uh, they should be down and belichick will probably want to take away parker leaving jacecki uh who had a good rapport with um, Fitzpatrick at the end of the last season. He should get a little more targets than usual. So last but not least, the flex position at 5,600. I like Lev Bell a lot here. Um, I think I'm going to go with him, but I also like Marlon Mack a lot. Uh, doesn't make a lot of sense to play Mack at the defense that I'm playing, but it's not the craziest thing ever. So I think out of these options, um, 
you know, McLaurin's not bad, I guess, but uh, they should be down and want to throw the ball. He might have a higher ceiling, but I'm probably going to play Lev Bell here. Uh, I don't love it. I hate the Jets, and I hate Adam Gase uh, with a passion, but um, I do think that this is probably the cheapest he's ever been. He still should have a high ceiling. They, if Gase doesn't give the ball to him this season and right now, then I don't know what the hell to do with that guy. I'm going to pick Lev Bell in my last spot here, but I like Singletary a lot here too. I actually think Singletary is in a better spot than uh, Bell, but I do think Bell's a better player with the more uh, usage, um, and he doesn't have Josh Allen to cannibalize a lot of his runs. I'm going to pick Bell over Singletary and Mack here, but I, do, I don't mind uh, any of these plays here. But for the sake of this lineup, we are going to go with Lev Bell, and there we have it. So we have... I believe a pretty balanced lineup here with Rodgers to Devontae Adams as a lower owned stack. Rodgers is one of my 5% plays, you know. I think that uh, Doyle um, and or Bell and or Devontae Adams could be another one of those 5 to 10 percenters. Uh, probably, they, probably most of them won't. They'll be over that. But, you know, as long as one of them is, I got a really solid balance there. I think Cook probably going to be in the 20% range. I think Mark Ingram might be a little higher. I think he's going to be somewhat popular. I think Emmanuel Sanders will be very popular, and I think T.Y. Hilton will be very popular. So we have our, our popular players there. Um, Jags D, again, not my favorite, but I think if you're trying to you know, fit in some of these offensive, super high ceiling guys, they're a good D to go low with. So that's it for today, guys. Like I said, if you want more in-depth analysis and strategy and content from us, support us on Patreon. Click the link below. Um, if you want to buy our packages on State Kings, please do. You can click the link below, uh, link in the description, and come buy our packages. And again, we stream it on Twitch so you can watch the lineups and the best lineups as we rifle through them so you can sweat with the best lineups uh, live during the games. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week. Thanks.